Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory be to God. Amen and amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Father, I will say thank you again for another wonderful time. Thank you for today. Thank you for everyone who got all your sons and daughters that are connected to this midweek service, today's midweek service, online, oh God. Father, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your protection over our lives. Thank you for your provisions, even in these difficult times, oh God. Lord, you have been there for us. Lord, we are grateful that you have sustained us. You have kept us alive. Lord, you respect, oh God, of all the works, activities of the devils. Lord, we say we are grateful for your light and your glory. Thank you. Lord Jesus, we say thank you. Our King, our Lord, thank you. Father, we say thank you for the table you have prepared for us today. Take all the glory and all the honor, Lord, as we feast in your word and as you give us understanding, enlightenment to God, that we may know what your will is for us, individual will, personal will for us, collective will for us, O oh God. Hallelujah. Blessed be your holy and mighty name, our God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I welcome every one of us again today, every one of you out there. You may be in London, you may be in Germany, you may be in the U.S., wherever you are, in Nigeria, wherever you are. Thank God for your life. Thank God that you are able to connect with us today to hear the word of our Father. Hallelujah. I believe God has prepared something good for us. Amen. And today, I believe strongly by the word of God that our coming into his presence to feast in the world shall not be the same. Our life shall not be the same and we're not going to go home empty-handed. Hallelujah. So believe that you receive something from the Lord today. So I pray that as we stand in his presence, that whatever the challenge, whatever wherever you are and bring peace bring restoration bring blessing upon your life in jesus mighty name hallelujah glory be to god so let's get ready now to go on i believe you have your bibles i believe you have your writing materials because you may need to write jot some things and as the message goes on as we continue to speak please be hitting those buttons <laughs> the, 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 the like buttons make your comments hallelujah hallelujah Let's see that you are being blessed. Let's see that God is speaking to your heart. Let's see that you are catching the revelation. Hallelujah. Amen. Show your presence. Show your presence. Hallelujah. Show your presence in the house. Hallelujah. So every one of you connected, invite, share the page or share the page right now also with your loved ones. Invite them to come. Invite them. Invite people to come in. Yes, your contacts to come in. Hallelujah. Because God want to speak to us and it's not just us but god wants everyone to understand what his will is for each and everybody hallelujah so thank you father hallelujah i bless god for you i thank you so brethren let us kick off in the name of jesus christ hallelujah so we'll continue again with uh, this end subject like i said i don't know how many how long it's going to take us that's how many parts or series because definitely it's a series Know, the, know God's perfect will for your life, then experience that will by faith we are looking at. Amen. That is knowing God's will for your life. Knowing God's will for your life. You know, we are children of the most high God. You are a child of God. Okay? God did not just redeem you from sin and let you here on earth to wander, to live according to your will or the way you want. God has plans for you, every one of us, collectively. So we must understand his plan for us. You must understand his plan for you as an individual. You must understand his plan for us collectively. Because he is the one that redeemed us. Not only that he has created, but he redeemed us unto himself. And the scriptures say that his plans for us, his thoughts for us are thoughts of good and not of evil. Thoughts of peace. Thoughts of prosperity. Amen. Amen. So we must understand this. We must know it, know it, understand it, know it very well. So that it's not like just the way you know your name. Because if somebody comes and in the middle of the night when you are fast asleep and wakes you up 
I say, what is your name? I'm sure you are not going to guess what your name is. You simply will answer and mention your name. So it is that at any point you must understand what the will of God is for you. That even when you tell the devil to get behind you, like Jesus Christ said to Peter, because the Lord knew the will of the Father for him. You know, that he must go to Jerusalem, you know, suffer, you know, persecuted, you know, be smitten and be killed. But Peter, who did not understand that, when the Lord was telling him, Ah, oh, Master, you that should come, don't say such a thing. How can you say you're going to go and die? But he said to Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Of course, Peter wasn't the devil, but Peter happened to yield to the leadings, manipulations of the devil. Amen. So don't allow the devil to manipulate your mind. Even if he sends someone to tell you otherwise, something contrary to what the will of God is for you, you'll be able to tell the devil, get behind me. I know what the will of God is for me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, child of God, it's very interesting to know that the will of God for us, the will of God for us, is both written and unwritten. So, I would like you to be very attentive. Don't let anything distract you at all. Very, very interesting. Now, that the will of God is both written and unwritten. The written is revealed in the Holy Scriptures, that is the Bible. And it is called the most sure word of prophecy. That is the written word, the most sure word of prophecy. <laughs> Amen. Because more sure in the sense that you can read it, you can see it. At least you know that this one was written by people who were moved by the Spirit of God, who were, who were led by the Spirit of God to write down those things. It's different from what you say that God spoke to you, either through dream or whatever, a vision or prophecy, you know, or word of knowledge that will come from somebody. Okay? So, the written is written in the Holy Scriptures and it's called a more sure word of prophecy. This written, though it is written in black and white, so to speak, though it is written, if it is not rightly divided or interpreted, can lead to destruction, it can lead to pains, it can even lead to unwarranted or uncalled for death. You understand that? Because the scripture says some people interpret the scriptures to their own destruction. Which means you must rightly divide the written. Though it is written, you must rightly divide it. You must rightly interpret the scripture so that you don't interpret your own destruction. Amen. Hallelujah. So you can look at that because of time. You know, you look at that in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. It says, Study to show yourself approved, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, but rightly, rightly dividing the word of truth. If you can rightly divide the word of truth, someone can wrongly divide it as well. What you wrongly divide, you also, you also apply wrongly. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 16, that is where the Bible talks about the most sure word. Peter talking about their experience in the Holy Mount, the Mount of Transfiguration, where they had the voice of God, the voice of God. When we were with Jesus Christ in the holy mountain and they heard the voice come, this is my son, and so on. But to be honest with you, even where you are, there are millions, even billions of voices. Even signal, radio signals, all over. Spiritually and physically, there are voices, there are signals all over. So it is the ability to tap or receive or tune into the particular frequency that you want that will enable you to receive the signal from that particular station. Do you understand that? Where you are, there is VOA, there is BBC, there is CNN, there is whatever the radio, whatever the television station, television channels, thousands of channels all around you. But the ability to, to receive any of them depends on one, the receiver you have, 
and then the strength of your receiver, because you can have a receiver body, is not very strong. It's not very strong in catching the, 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 the signals in the air, in the atmosphere. Now, the second third scripture, Second Peter chapter 3, verse 14 to 17, talks about people interpreting the word to their own destruction. So you can go write the scriptures and read them later. Now, the unwritten word is revealed, the unwritten word, that the unwritten will of God is revealed through dreams, is revealed through visions, through prophecies, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, and so on. Amen. So, but these ones also need to be rightly what? Interpreted. You understand? Because someone can dream and see something, and for your information, there is no, there is no um, specific book of interpretation or dreams. Every dream is unique. A particular symbol may mean something to one person and mean a different thing to another person. So nobody should tell you that Oh, if you dream like this, this is how this is the meaning. Or you dream like that, that is the meaning. The same thing with visions. So you must know how to interpret those dreams. And there is a gift. There's a gift. Joseph had that gift to interpret dreams. Not only was he a dreamer, but he also had the gift of interpreting dreams. Daniel was another person who was able to interpret, interpret dreams by reason of the grace of God, you know, that was upon him. And when dreams are not well interpreted or wrongly interpreted, of course, it, it will lead to very serious problem or, 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 or danger. Hallelujah. So you'll find examples of People understanding the will of God for them through dreams, through visions, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, and so on. You find that in the life of people like Isaac. You know, when there was famine in, uh, in Gera in the days of Isaac, and Isaac wanted to go to Egypt. And God spoke to him. <laughs> God spoke to him. It was, he didn't see it in the written word. He didn't see it in the scriptures like we have the Bible today. But he understood that it was God that spoke to him. He understood. And that would have been because he would have been having, number one, he would have been acquainted with God, with God himself and be used to the voice of God. And he was also sensitive enough to hear what God was saying to him. You'll find that also in the life of Joseph. You know, Joseph was, Joseph was called a dreamer. They were called a dreamer. Peter had also some experience when it comes to visions, when it comes to dreams. Remember, Peter was in a trance, which was a vision where he saw a sheet come down from heaven with all manner of four-footed beasts which were considered to be unclean. And when he saw that, he heard a voice saying to him, Rise, kill, and eat. But because he knew what was written according to the laws, the Levitical laws, that according to those those laws which God gave to the children of Israel, that God separated certain animals, he considered certain animals to be clean and some to be unclean. And he knew that. And the ones he saw were unclean. So based on his understanding of the scriptures, he said to the Lord, how do you want me to rise and kill and eat what is unclean? He has not did anything like that before. But he did not know that God was not speaking specifically about animals. God was referring to human beings. Indeed, the Gentile nations. 
And while he was pondering, because he had to ponder to understand, and that's exactly what we are talking about. You need to understand. You need to, you need to seek to understand the interpretation of the dreams. So while he was pondering, then he was, he was called upon that we were looking for him. And when he got down from the loft where he was praying, he got down to find that Cornelius, a Gentile, had sent people to come and invite him. And while they were telling that story, that was when it dawned on him that this is interpretation of what he had just seen. So tell me, if he didn't seek to understand and that experience, the invitation from Cornelius to invite him, how will he have understood that God was actually referring to human beings and Gentiles for that matter? So it's very, very important that we understand what the will of God is. Interpret, be able to interpret. Don't just run because you say God spoke to me. In fact, let me say that the written one, even though it's, I would say it is even, well, how, would I, how would I put it? The written one, they are all good, they are all good. <laughs> they are all good. They are all good. But what is written is at least it's easier, you know, compared to that which is not written. At least you have a reference point. But the truth is that every unwritten vision or will of God must not contradict that which is written. You say God spoke to you to do a particular thing. That thing must not contradict the will of God in the written one. Very, very important. So that is one way of understanding. Okay? Whatever you say, the Lord has said to you, which may not necessarily be written in black and white. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, like I said, it is very important, okay, very, very important to interpret, understood, whether it is written or unwritten will of God which is revealed to you, which is revealed to you, which is revealed to you. Because if you don't understand them, just like the written, the unwritten also can lead to unwarranted pains. You know, like people say, look, uh, God spoke to me, this is going to be my husband. I saw the person in my dream. God spoke to me, this is going to be my wife. I saw the person in my dream. I had a vision, there was prophecy. And sometimes you hear the same people come back to say, ah, if I knew, I wouldn't have gone this way. I didn't know it's a devil I married. I didn't know it's a wicked man I married. I didn't know. Uh, and it's, some people have even destroyed their lives because they, 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 they held on to what was actually not the will of God. Because Satan also, when we're talking about speaking in the prophets, word of prophecy, word of not all this one, Satan has his own counterfeit as well. Satan has his own counterfeit. So we just have to trust the Holy Ghost, you know, to help us. Hallelujah. Now, just like I said too, you know, people, you know, at, at least I'm sure you will have helped people. You have helped people tell you, ah, I know it's the will of God for me. I know it's the will of God for me. Oh, what I'm doing is the will of God. God spoke to me very clear. But when they go through crisis and all those who disappointment after some days, after weeks or months or years or whatever, the same person will come to tell you that, look, oh, I thought it was the will of God. I didn't know. I didn't know. I don't know what led me to this thing, no. You know, I don't know what made me to enter this thing, to do this business. You know, they will have dreamt. They will have been a word of, word, a word of knowledge, so to speak, a word of prophecy. It's also very important that you know the source of those words, the source. What's the source of the word of prophecy? God asked us to judge every word. We should try the spirit to know of which sort it is. Is it the spirit of the devil or the spirit of God? Satan speaks to people. Amen. Satan speaks to people. Familiar spirits are all over there. They are all out there. See speaking, telling people what God did not say. And a lot of people have found themselves in very difficult situations because they held on to those words 
that were not really from God, but were from the devil, from Satan. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The perfect will of God for someone may not necessarily also appear wonderful or appealing at the beginning. We must get this things sorted out, cleared. The perfect will of God may not necessarily be appealing or look wonderful at first sight or at the beginning. It doesn't mean that this is the will of God, for the, for example, it doesn't mean that God said this is his will for you. That at the beginning of the journey, that is going to look smooth, you know, look wonderful. Or maybe he said, this person is the will of God, this woman is the will of God for you, or that man is the will of God for you. And then you got into the marriage, and that is maybe the first few months, you begin to experience difficulties. That does not mean that that is not the will of God. It doesn't mean that is not the will of God. Because you must understand also that whatever is the will of God, Satan would like to destroy it. So that I want to, so that I want to, to prove that it is God following God is not good enough. In, in a similar point, so you would just have to get all these things settled, so that we don't make mistakes. So we don't run away. We don't see. We don't see a, a something that looks very dirty. Take for example, gold. This gold, people, gold that we see is very expensive. When you see the raw gold, if they give the raw gold to you, you will reject it. If they give you a pure, you know, gold, unrefined gold, if they give it to you, you will not take it. That is the basic truth. But because the gold has gone through fire, it's been refined several times, purified. So it comes out shining. So the will of God for you, that which is treasurable, which is good, that God has packaged for you, may not come as a refined gold. You understand? You may need to refine it. But the most important thing is that understand that the will of God is here for me. So I must stand, I must stand and endure the trial, the test. Because I know at the end of the day, it's going to turn out good. It's going to turn out good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Like they say, all that glitters may not necessarily be gold. You know that. I'm sure you heard about that. All that, not everything that glitters, shine, 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 shine. That may be gold after all. Because when you cut that thing, when you cut that thing, when you cut it deep, take a knife and cut it or whatever and cut it, divide it inside. The main core of it may just be ordinary iron, pure iron. <laughs> it may be maybe gold plated, you know, or rubbed off with some things to make it look beautiful or glittering. You understand that? So we just have to be very careful. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. All that glitters may not be pure gold. Amen. Amen. So what this means is that for us to really understand what the will of God is, whether for us individually or collectively, we may need to be, or not may, we must be acquainted with God. We, 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 must, we must need to be acquainted with God. Be acquainted be acquainted with God, okay? And in such a situation where we have a revelation as to whether it's the will of God, written or unwritten, we must seek his face prayerfully. Seek the face of God prayerfully, that is in prayer, and also search the word, search the word. You search the word of God. Search the word of God to know if what is being revealed to you is in line with the will of God. Take for example, the Bible says there's a prophet, if a prophet comes to you and says, look, this is the will of God for you, make some prophecies, and that thing came to pass. And afterward, the prophet said, well, you know, let's go and do, do, go and serve this one, go to do this one, which you know as it is written that it's not the will of God. He said, of course, God did not send that prophet. God didn't send that prophet. i give you an example again. Remember the, the young girl, the young girl that met Paul and his team, and began to prophesy that prophesied to them and said, These are men that have come to show us the way of heaven, the way of God. Men who have come to show or teach us the way of God. Okay? And the Bible said, This she continued to do. She was doing it for another part. And nobody will tell any, of course, generally, any person who comes to tell you, Ah, follow this way, this is the way of Christ. Follow God, follow God. This man is a man of God. Of course, you will think that that person that is, is, is speaking by the Spirit of the Lord. 
it doesn't necessarily follow that the spirit behind what she's saying is of God. And then, of course, you read in the scripture that Paul, God vexed in his spirit because he knew that it was not God that was speaking to this girl. And then he rebuked the spirit and cast the devil out of that young girl. And that is called the spirit of divination. That's familiar spirits. You know, a lot of people have been led by familiar spirits and people have still been led by familiar spirits today. You know, they are being deceived. Okay, because they tell you what seems to be correct. You can relate to it. Okay, it is not the immediate result that Satan is after, it is the end result. Okay, because Satan cannot truly show you the right way. That, in fact, if Satan tells you what appears to be truth, he's telling you the truth to his own advantage. He knows at the end of the day there'll be trouble for you. Because you must remember that the blessings of God, the maker, they will not come with sorrow. But the blessings of Satan, they will look like a blessing, but at the end of the day, you have trouble in them. So all that glitters may not be gold, and everything that you hear that look pleasing to your senses may not really come from God. May not really come from God. That is why we must try the spirits. That is why we must judge the world, judge the prophecies with the written word of God, which we know, which you know. And that is why you must know the word. So knowing the word is not knowing it for somebody else, but knowing it for your own self. Knowing it for your own self. Knowing the word of God for your own self. Because what God speaks to you, when any devil, any spirit speaks to you, whether it's of God or anything, you should be able to judge what you have heard with the written word. You should be able to say, ah, oh, this is contrary to the word of God. You know, you, you, you hear somebody, you know, you have, you have heard of people who go to, a, to, in fact, for example, to a married person and say, oh, the Spirit of God says you're going to be my wife. And this person is married. How can the Spirit of God tell you that this person is, is your wife or your husband, knowing fully well that this person is married? And then you know from the scripture that the Bible is against what? It's against adultery. The Bible is against adultery. It's against adultery. So how do you want to go take another person's wife or husband and you see it is God that is telling you? <laughs> that clearly tells you that the spirit speaking to you is not of God. And then you should bind that devil and tell the devil to leave your mind alone. <laughs> do you understand that? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So we must get acquainted with God. We must know his word. So that whatever revelation we have, we should be able to judge it. Look at it vis a vis what the word of God is saying. These things are not easy. You can't buy the will of God on the shelf the way you go to the supermarket or go to the store and say, Give me how much is that uh, uh, tin of uh, tomato or how much is it, uh, that tin of milk? You don't see the word of God. So <laughs> God said, What? Well, he said, You will find me after you have searched for me. After you ask, that is why I say you must prayerfully ask the Lord. There are some revelations that you need to pray and pray and pray and pray before you really get to understand what God is saying. So we just have to be very careful. We just have to be very careful. Hallelujah. But the one of the most important thing you must know, we must know, the will of God for each and every one of us is different. Is different. I think last week I tried to we said something like Jesus Christ when he was born and then the life of Jesus and the life of uh, John the Baptist. You know, John the Baptist was born. God required that razor will not touch his hair, okay? Alcohol will not touch his mouth, okay? He will not drink alcohol, and so he was going to be a Nazarene. But he went to the, when he, was, when he was alive, he was in the wilderness most of the time, eating a wild uh, locust and then uh, 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 eating honey. But Jesus Christ, when he was born, there was no such requirement or consecration from, from God concerning his life. So he came, he was eating and dining, even with unbelievers, with sinners, with sinners, with sinners. And they called him a wine Bible and a gluten. You understand that? But <laughs> John the Baptist did not condemn him. Neither did he condemn John the Baptist because each and every one, both of them understood what the will of God was for them. Jesus did not go into the wilderness to be eating wild locusts and drinking honey. And John the Baptist did not come into the city to be wearing, you know, uh, 
uh, uh, linen clothes, fine clothes, you know, the designer's wears and all those stuff. He didn't do that. He didn't do that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So when we understand what the will of God is for us, it will be very, very important. It will be very, in fact, it will ease you of pain. Let me say something here. You know a lot of people think that uh, though it's a, general, it's, a, it's a general will, that's what I'm saying, there's a general will and a specific will. You know people think that because God said, well, the man should find a husband, I mean the man should find a wife, a woman, say he that find a man, speak to the man, say he that find a wife, find a good friend, obtain a favor of the Lord. Okay? He said, go into the world. When he created that dam, he said, go and the world, multiply, replenish, and so on and so forth. Now, some people just think that because that was the general will of God, that therefore it applies to everybody. If it applies to everybody, would mean Jesus Christ did not fulfill the will of God because he didn't marry, he didn't have any child. Paul didn't marry, Paul didn't have any child. It means they didn't fulfill the will of God. But no, they fulfilled the will of God. They fulfilled the will of God. And they knew it, that they were not ordained, they were not required to get into marry to marry so every man so don't look at somebody who are marrying and say yourself must marry by force and don't say because someone are not marrying therefore you will not marry understand what the will of god is for you it's a grace because if you have that grace you will live your life without trouble you will live your life peacefully nothing will worry you that people are living in mansion and you are not living in mansion, once you understand what the will of God for you and you stand in that will of God, you will not experience any pain. You will not be looking at anybody. You will not be looking at life as though life is not favoring you. You understand that? Because there are people who look at other people and say, what? Why is God blessing this person? God is not blessing me. So why? Huh? So you must understand what the will of God is for you, particularly. I, let me tell you one small uh, story. There is a testimony. Some years back, some years back, when I was going to start the, this very ministry, when I was going to start, a year before this, about a year before that, before I was going to start, even though I knew God has called me to start a ministry, and God, in fact, I was thinking that I was going to go and start the church in a very large place and all those stuff. But God has spoken to me through the word of wisdom, through a friend, a prayer partner, as I should start where I am. So I didn't know, my starting where I am was like starting the neighborhood. I didn't know God was talking to me about starting the church in my living room, in my living room. And I said, I, my mind didn't even go to my living room. So by the time I went out to go and seek the face of the Lord, after I have left the former church where I was part of, after I have resigned, and I went to see the face of the Lord in, you know, in prayer and in fasting for about 21 days. Before this time, I've sent out my uh, furniture, the furniture in my house. You know, I gave those furniture out, not because I wanted to start church. I even gave them out while we were still, while we were still in the former church. I gave them out because I would say, I'm, in fact, I've used these things. Let me believe God for a new one. So let me give that one to create room for another one, a better one. So we gave the, the furniture out, and for close to one year, no furniture came to my living room. And I kept praying, and you know, <laughs> of course, you know what, the, you know how it means to be praying and binding and commanding the things to come. All the prayers, furniture didn't come to my house. And while I was, after I now resigned, there was still no furniture. My living room was just empty, with the rocks on the ground, on the floor. And while I was fasting, a friend of mine came, a very good friend of mine came to me while I was fasting in the, in, the, in the camp. But I went somewhere else to go and wait on the Lord. And came to me and said they, they, he had an issue with his landlord and they wanted to eject him out. And then uh, he needed to move his things out because he wouldn't want them to throw his things out from where he was staying. He came to my wife and my wife said, look, but my husband is not there. He's the only one that can give me permission because he knew my living room was empty. So my wife said, look, my son, my husband. So he came to me in the camp where I was praying, seeking the face of the Lord. And to be honest with you, until I went to the camp to seek the face of the Lord, I never knew that God was talking about starting in my living room. So that morning before the brother came, God confirmed to me that what he meant by starting, in, starting where I am was starting my, my living room. And that was why he has not given me seats you know, or, 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 or furniture to replace what I gave out. 
what I sold out. But I called it so in, I sold it out. You know, so when he came, and then he said, This was the situation. He wanted to carry his things, move his things to my house. I didn't tell him. I was in a very difficult situation when he was telling me this story. You know, because God had just told me he didn't, has not replaced my uh, furniture because he wants to the church to start in my living room. And here's a brother, a child of God. So I looked at them and said, what, what, what? I didn't even tell him anything. So I just, okay, go tell my, because in my heart, I was saying, How will I, what will I not say? Tomorrow, if I say no, because I want to start, you say now, he had a problem. Uh, somebody called, himself a Christian, a brother, you know, a friend. And so I just said, go tell my wife. I said, he should allow you, she should allow you to do or to move the things there. So when he left, I went back to God and I began to say to the Lord, I asked the Lord, I said, you told me this morning, that the reason you are not giving me replacement for my furniture, which I sold out, is because you want the church to start in my living room. But here your son has just come and he had an issue. You know, so what do you want me to do? Should I have told him not to move his furniture to my or his thing to my house? Would if he say I'm not working in law because it's a difficult situation? And now, as he moves them into the living room, this is going to be about a week or two before I will return back to, 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 to the city, back home to start church. I said, now, nah, when I get back home and I'm going to start the church, because he said the church must start in my living room. So when I'm going to start, moving those furniture out to create space for the church to start, wouldn't there be wear and tear? And in the case of wear and tear, will there not be quarrel between us? Will they not say I've misusing or I've destroying his things? I said, well, you are the one who told me to start the church there. So if you truly say that, that you start a church in my living room, make provision for him so that we won't have any issue. And God being wonderful God. He can't lie. God can't lie. He can't lie. But like I said, you must really understand what he's saying to you or what he says to you. By the time I return back home, in my mind, in my mind, I was expecting by the time I get into, the, into my house, I'm going to see chairs everywhere filled up. But as they opened the door to welcome me home, I looked at the whole baby was empty and I asked, what has happened? And my wife said, ah. Uh, my friend, you know, came back and then uh, that same day he came when he returned back the, 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 the caretaker of the house where he was living came to him and said, look, we wanted to set, pack, throw your things out by the following day, but listen, I have found an alternative accommodation for you so don't worry, you know I'm going to allow you and then you move your things from here to your new accommodation and that was why he didn't move it. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. Did you see what I'm talking about? So, God's will, does, the will of God does not come like very plain, clear. It may come for some people, but sometimes it will come, you know, blood. You know, and then you will need to pray and pray and seek the face of God for him to give you understanding and interpretation. And the moment you get it, hold on to it. And you see God do what he wants to do. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So what am I saying? It's very, very important that we understand the, what the will of God is. Very, very important. Very, very important. And don't judge what God is saying to you with what God is saying to somebody else. Unless God is speaking to both of you concerning the same issue. Concerning the same issue. Because sometimes also God can send a word to you to confirm, you know, what he has previously said to you. You know, that's what we call confirmation. <laughs> Amen. So, it's very important that we know that God is ever faithful. He cannot lie to us. Neither when he says he's going to bless us, he's going to say, this is where I want you to go, that he's going to repent of the promise that he has made. Look at Colossians. Let's look at Colossians chapter 1, verse 7. He said, As you also learned of Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is for you a faithful minister of Christ, who also declared unto us your love in the Spirit, your love in the Spirit. He said, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you. Do not cease to pray for you. Let us see the prayer that we are praying for them. Do not see to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will, the knowledge of the will of God in all wisdom. 
that you might be filled with the knowledge of who? With the knowledge of who? Of the will of God in all wisdom in every area of your life. In all wisdom, all wisdom and spiritual what? Understanding. Spiritual understanding. Now, what will this do? When you have good knowledge, good understanding of what the will of God is for you in every area of life, what will that do for you? Of course, look at the result. He said that you may walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. Unto all pleasing. Yes. Unto all pleasing. You can't be where God did not want you to be and you will say that your life is pleasing to God. It's not possible. It's only where you... Only when you are in the place where he wants you to be, whether you're experiencing the success or whatever, it doesn't matter. As long as that is where he wants you to be, then that is when you can say your life is pleasing to God. You are in the will of God. But as long as you are there, what God ordained for you will surely meet you there. Amen. Now, he said that you might walk with your fame, Walk with the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work. That is when you know what the will of God is in all wisdom and true understanding. That you be fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Now, strengthen with all might because what the will of God is for you. Challenges will come. There is not that. In fact, the Bible says anybody want to live a godly or righteous life should be ready to face persecution. But when you know that you are in the will of God, that word that God said to you will be your strength. The reason some people go into ministry and get frustrated and jump out, close up, is because they did not really understand what the will of God is for them. Because there is nothing that is good that will not face challenge. That you are facing challenge in it does not mean that that is not the will of God. But when you understand that that is what the will of God is for you, no matter the challenge you will face, that word of God, that word that God spoke to you, that revelation you got that this is the will of God is what is going to touch you, is what is going to keep you running. That's what is going to keep you running. Because there is challenge. Anything that is godly must face challenge. Because Satan wants to prove a point that God has lied to you. But when you know God cannot lie, and truly you understood that God spoke to me, ah, the child of God, you stand on that word that God has spoken to you. It will strengthen you. It will strengthen you. Remember Paul. Paul had a tongue in the flesh and he went to God and was praying and asking God to deliver him or heal him. Okay? Three times, three times. Somewhere like Paul. Praying three times to God, asking God three times according to the scripture. He said he besought the Lord three times that that tongue in the flesh would depart from him. All he could hear from God was, look, Paul, <laughs> say my grace is sufficient for you. <laughs> for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Then when Paul got that revelation that ah, God does not want to take it out to, because God wants to have something better for him. Okay? I came back and said, well, I, I take what? He said, he said I, take, I take pride. I take, I rejoice in necessities, in afflictions, for I know that when I am weak, then I, I am strong. You understand that? When God reveals to you what his will is for you, when you are going through challenges, in fact, you will want challenges to come because you know that the God who's, who told you to be there will not abandon you. He will strengthen you. He will comfort you. The enemy, no matter what they do to pull you down, they will never succeed. But to say you will not face challenges, that is what I will tell you, forget about that. You will face challenges. But don't give up as long as you are sure that God spoke to you. God is not unfaithful to abandon you in the hands of the enemy. Amen. So, he said that being strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, Unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness when you are in the will of God. With joyfulness. With joyfulness when you are in the will of God. Now giving thanks unto the Father. When you are in the will of God, you give thanks. Remember Abraham. Abraham, the Bible says he gave glory to God in the midst of that challenge he had with his wife because they didn't have a child according to the promise. They didn't have a child. 
But the Bible says he believed the word of God. The Bible says against hope, the, against the hopelessness of that situation, he believed in the hope of God's promise that he will truly be a father of many nations according to the promise that God gave to him. And the Bible says, he be not weak in faith. He be not weak in faith. Gave glory to God. He was rejoicing because he knew he was fully persuaded that what God had promised God was also able to perform. That's the joy. <laughs> that is the joy in knowing that God has spoken to you. He said, give him thanks when you know that the will of God is for you. When you are going through challenge, child of God, he said, give him thanks. Give him thanks unto the Father which has made us meet. He has made you qualified. God has made you qualified to be partaker of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has made you a partaker, a partaker. Of the inheritance of the saints in life, he had delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of our sins or remission of our sins. Child of God, this, are, this is revealed. It is written, you have been delivered. We are, we are in heaven by faith. So we must thank God. So in respect of what you are going through, challenges, as long as you know what the will of God is for you, child of God, rejoice because God has given you the power, qualified you to be a partaker of the inheritance that prepared for the saints of God. Acts chapter 20, verse 32. Acts 20, 32. He said, and now, brethren, I commend you to God. Paul speaking. I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. The word of his grace. I'm commending the word of his grace. You must know the word of God's grace. You must know what the Lord Jesus Christ has accomplished for you. But like I said, like I said, knowing need is to guide you. It's to guide you. That Christ has redeemed us he had redeemed us from the curse. Of, the curse that came upon humanity because of the sin of Adam. He had redeemed us. That doesn't necessarily mean that you as an individual must, <laughs> how would I say it, must marry or must have children or, uh, you know, or must buy houses and must be a bit, bit. No, 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 no. Understand what the will of God is for you. Live in it, walk in it. Hallelujah. If you understand it, it will be very good for you. But don't condemn those that God wants to be financiers. Because God is not trying to put money in your hand for yourself. God is putting money in your hand for his kingdom, for you to be a blessing to people around, to be a blessing to the nations. That's why God is putting money in your hand for the gospel. Okay, so if you are not there, so to speak, in that bracket of people that God said, I'm going to put money in their hand because every person has his office, so you must understand your office. Okay, so be content, with your, be content in your office and then serve God in that office. Jesus was content in his office. Paul was content in his office. They served God in the very office. They called it that God has called, called them to, to, to do or to live in Amen. So you for you and be content in that office. You will enjoy the peace of God. Amen. You will not be troubled by anybody around you. You know, whether they, they doesn't, that does not, I mean, every person has an office. Every person. So you won't say because God has called somebody and he blessing somebody, giving a person a, maybe a, 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 a large congregation and you don't have that congregation. The grace of God upon that person may not be the same amount of grace of God upon your life. Everything is based on grace. The grace upon the man that has large congregation cannot be a small grace. The grace God gives you what you can manage. Amen. God gives you what you can manage. There was a very rich man here in Nigeria. Very rich man. He's late. You know, he said to somebody, one of his staff many years ago, he said, pray that God don't give you, doesn't give you that kind of money that he has. He said, if you have the kind of money he has, you will go crazy. You will go crazy. You go crazy. You know, some people, money has made them mad. <laughs> money has made them Because they, they didn't have the grace, you know, to have the wealth. So they made the wealth and they don't have the grace to maintain because you need grace to be able to maintain wealth. If you don't know how to maintain wealth, wealth will maintain you. 
If you don't know how to maintain wealth, wealth will maintain you. I think Archbishop Vidalta said this on some time also while he was alive. How to maintain wealth. You don't know how to maintain wealth, wealth will maintain you. Like the rich young ruler, wealth, met, wealth prosperity was abundant while maintaining him. And that was why he was controlled by wealth and he missed the blessing that God wanted to, to bring into his life. Thank you, Jesus. So he said, God, the grace of God is able to build you up. No, it is a general, this general. But general doesn't mean that that should be the specific will of God for you as an individual. But you must know whether it applies to you as an individual. And until you know that, until you're able to know that it don't apply to you, hold on to the general will. Don't let the devil deceive you. So don't, because you didn't succeed, and say, well, that's well, that how God wants it for me. No. <laughs> Unless God speaks to you particularly, that look, this is not my plan for your life. If God didn't say perfectly to you, hold on to the general will. You are including the general will. Amen. You are including the general will. Because the general will is for everybody. But if God didn't speak for you to, to separate you from the general, hold on to the general. But if God speaks to you that your life is different because he has, he has cut out a different way of life for you, then follow what God has cut out for you. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. We need to know all this. So we need to know it all this so that we don't get we don't get disappointed or discouraged in our walk with God. Amen. Proverbs chapter eleven, verse nine says, "And hypocrite with his mouth destroyed neighbor." But that's not what verse, the, the, the second part of it. Eleven B. He said, "But true knowledge, true knowledge, true knowledge. We need knowledge. You need to know the you need to know the knowledge of the will of God for you, so that you don't allow the devil to say true knowledge. They just it didn't say the unjust. They just the righteous shall be delivered." shall be delivered from poverty, from the hand of the enemy, from failure, true knowledge. So if you don't understand what the will of God is for you, as a righteous person, you can die poor. And then we say, that's the will of God for you. He said, my people, he didn't say not his people. He said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge of what? Lack of knowledge of the will of God. Or the will of God. Or the will of God. That is why we are talking about knowing the will of God and applying our faith in the will in order to do what? To enjoy it. We need the knowledge of the will of God for us to be delivered from the lies and bondage of the devil and to be who God has ordained that we should be. You know, Satan is a liar. He lies to people. There are people that Satan is holding captive, holding in bondage. Okay? True lies. True lies. True falsehood, according to the book of Isaiah. Okay? Satan is using lies to tell them that, look, you know, it's not the will of God for you to be this. It's not the will of God. You know, there are people who believe that it's not the will of God for them to speak with tongues. There are people who believe it's not the will of God. You know? Well, unless they are saying that God spoke to them personally. But I know that's the will of God for every one of us to pray in tongues now. Ah, what is this? Well, Speaking in tongues, I mean, being filled with the Holy Ghost is good for every one of us, every child of God. Amen. So, but people, there are people who believe that's not the will of God. To so them, clearly, well, but who am I? If God told them specifically, look, you don't need to be filled with, the, with the, filled with the Holy Ghost. And as long as you are serving God, as long as they are doing the will of God, as long as they are not complaining, well, praise the Lord. Thank God for them. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so we must know that Christ came. Generally now, we must know why Jesus Christ came. That he came to die in order to bring God to the place of glory and honor and abundance. Hebrews chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. He died a shameful death to restore us to the place of glory. General will of God for us. And if God has not told you something contrary, hold on to this promise. If God has not told you contrary, hold on to this. Amen. When you read the book of Hebrews 11, you understand that there are people who receive children, who receive restoration, and you know, Abraham, all of those people, God bless them. The Bible also, there were people who refused to be delivered. They knew their deliverance when they sang God. But they said, no. I'd rather not be delivered. I want to have a better deliverance. I want to have a better resurrection. 
and they were satisfied with that. John 8, verse 32, he said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. But take note, it's only the truth that you apply in your life that will set you free. You can know the truth and remain in darkness, and remain, and remain in poverty when you refuse to apply the truth. At least you know, take for example, you know that if, for example, somebody is sick, okay, the person knows that if he takes the medication I'm giving to him, prescribed for him, will be well. And the person had the medication, he knows that if he takes this medication, he will be well. And he just uh, had the medication in his hand, and just be saying, and if I take this medication, I'll be well, and refuse to take the medication. Will he be well? Of course, he will die there. He will die there. It's the truth you know you applied. That is why the scriptures in the book of James, he said, it is not the hearer, not the hearer, that is important, but the hearer and the doer. When you know, you must do. When you receive, you must do. If you don't do it, no blessing. No blessing. Thank you, Jesus. So knowing the will of God is very important also in our prayer life. Knowing the will of God, very important in our prayer life, because only it is only when we pray according to the will of God that he hears and answers our prayers. You see, sometimes some people, people don't pray. People don't pray and pray and pray and pray and think that God is answering their prayer. <laughs> Listen, it is not every prayer that God answers. It's only prayer that prayed according to his will. That, that is the prayer that God answers. And listen, it is only when prayer, it is sweet. I work with God in this area is very interesting. When you are praying and you are getting answers, it's very, very, and it's very, very encouraging. You want to pray more. <laughs> but when you are praying and you are not getting answers, it can be discouraging. And you need to understand, you need to ask yourself, am I praying according to the will of God? Or I'm just praying you know, to consume of my, upon my flesh, because that is why I say in the book of James, I say, say you ask and, and do not receive because you are asking, you are asking and miss, you are asking to consume upon your loss. You are asking, you are asking and miss, you are asking outside the will of God. Outside the will of God. Mark 11, 24 says that, he said, whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe, you receive it, and then you shall have it. Whatever things you desire. That's a general statement, but you need to rightly divide it. Somebody say, ah, God say whatever I desire, so I can desire to go to the moon today. Father, I desire to go to the moon today. Just, Lord, just make me go to the moon today. I want to follow that from go to the moon today. Well, <laughs> better understand what the will of God is for you. Oh, Lord, people have died. Look at that uh, skyscraper. I want to have a skyscraper like that man. Oh, well, you need to understand what the will of God for you. Do you understand that? Now, because you now compare that scripture with other scripture, more look at it in light of other scripture. First John chapter 5, verse 14 to 15, says, And this is the confidence we have in him that if we pray according to his will, did you see that now? In other words, if you pray according to his desire for you, then we know that that which we have prayed. That God will hear us and then He will grant us that desire. Only when we pray according to His will. Do you understand that? So, understanding His will, therefore, is very, very important. I'm talking about the written will of God. Okay? Or the unwritten will of God. There are businesses you want to, even the business you are doing now, there's no way written in the Bible that shall do this. Now. The, your business is not in the, the name of your business. Your company's name is not. That particular line of business is not in. Where do you see it? But you pray and God say, God, I want to start this business. I come into your hands. If that is not the will of God for you, child of God, you may force yourself into it. Too, but it's possible that God will also speak to you that don't go that way. It's also a point that God will tell you, go that way, I'm with you. And God will make the resources available for you to go into that business. But you must understand what the will of God is for you. Otherwise, when you go to that business and then you, you run into a problem, it is the understanding, the revelation that God has given to will sustain you. But where there is no revelation, there is no understanding, and you have not heard from God, 
listen to me, when you hit that challenge, that obstacle, you're going to faint. <laughs> you're going to give up. You're going to give up. So understanding what the will of God is for you will give you comfort. In the midst of the crisis, in the midst of the challenges, you'll get comfort of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So we must know the will of God and know that Jesus Christ came that we must have life and have it abundantly. Child of God, that's the general will of God for every one of us. In fact, let me say this. Abundant life is not limited to the mundane things of this world. The primarily, primarily abundant life is eternal life. Eternal life. And there is no way you tell me that uh, it's not the will of God for you. The Bible says it is the will of God for all men to be saved, including you. So, you have eternal life already if you have Jesus Christ. Now, abundant life is God blessing you as well. General, like I said, God blessing you, God blessing you with material things, God prospering your business, prospering your life. You know, God wants you to walk, you know, so get a job, pray. If you don't have a job, say God, because it's the will of God. For because God says, He that does not work, let him know. He said to God, Daddy, I want to walk. Not only want I want to walk, he's also, he's also said, Let him that stole see no more. Let him walk with his hand so that he be in position to give to people who are in need. So he said, Lord, I've not stolen before. I don't want to steal. Now I'm unemployed. I want job so that I can I'll be in position to be a blessing to those in need. So Lord, I need a job. Give me a job, my father. That he opened door for employment for me. Uh -huh. It's the will of God. Pray that prayer. God will give you job. God will give you business. Okay. Now, Christ came that you might have that life. Have abundant life. Christ did not come to die so that you can be a beggar in life. He didn't die that you might be a beggar in life. You understand that? So, let pray and let God understand that too. That is the will of God. So don't be suffering and thinking that the will of God for you to be there, suffering poverty, unemployed, you know, and all those stuff, and say it is the will of God. You ask yourself, if it's the will of God, of what use is this my condition? Of what, of what use is it to God that I'm in this situation? Of what use? Of what use am I to the kingdom of God in this condition? Does my condition glorify God? So you ask yourself those questions. Amen. Because look at Psalm 68. We're going to be stopping now. Psalm 68. Verse 19. 19 to 20. He said, Blessed be the Lord. <laughs> this is good. Who daily loaded us. Who daily loaded us with benefits. Daily. 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 God daily loads us. Blessed be the Lord. Who daily, every day, loaded us with what? With benefits. Even the God of our salvation, Selah. He that is our God is the God of salvation. And unto him, unto the law, unto the God, the law, belong the issues. That is the escapes from death. And that is why he said, God, he said, no temptation that have befallen you. This temptation, you are, these challenges you are going through right now. Child of God, don't need to kill yourself. Don't bother. Don't worry. Don't, don't be anxious. He said there is no temptation or challenges that are befalling you or you are going through that is not common to men. You are not the first person to go through this particular challenge. And by the grace of God, you will never be the last. You are coming out of it. He said with the temptation, God is able to make a way for you. A way of escape, a way of escape, so that you will not be tempted above that which you are able to bear. Do you understand that? So that is what he's saying. That he said, he said, unto the law, unto God the law belong the issue. The word issue means escape from death, escape from challenges, escape from destruction, escape from problem. God is able to make a way for you. He makes a way where there is no way. Don't doubt the ability of God to do that. He brought Israel out from Egypt. They got to the Red Sea. Nobody can cross the Red Sea. There were no boats, no ship, no ferry to carry them. But it pleased God that Pharaoh will not meet them there to kill them. So God parted the waters of the Red Sea. And Israel went through the midst of the Red Sea and through a dry land. That same God is same yesterday, today, and forever. What he did for them is able to do for you. So where there is no way for you, I pray that God will make a way for you. 
Every challenge that you are going through that you're almost discouraged, that life has come to an end, life has not come to an end. The Lord our God make a way for you. But it's important for you to understand that this situation you are in, these challenges, they are not the will of God for your life. God has better things in stock for you. Amen. Christ came that you might have life and for you more abundantly. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. So look unto the Lord. Search the scripture. Search the scripture. Know the will of God. Okay? Connect. Be in fellowship of the saints to hear the word that will encourage your faith. It's not over until it's over. You will not die prematurely. Coronavirus or whatever plague the enemy have released to trouble the sons of men will not affect you. You will live and not die to do the will of God in the land of the living. The promises of God for you shall be fulfilled in your life. The will of God for you shall be fulfilled in your life. And every counsel of Satan manipulating, seeking to manipulate your destiny and frustrate your work with God. The Lord bruise the head of the devil under your feet. The Lord break the arm of the wicked. Every evil hand that is stretched out against you to trouble you, to frustrate, to discourage you, the Lord break and cut them off from your life. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. The blood of Jesus speak for you against every evil voice that is speaking against your life, your health, your business, your marriage, your destiny. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the peace of the Lord reign and rule in your life. In the mighty name of the Lord, open your eyes to understand. The Lord give you revelation, insight into what his will for you is. For you, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So we're going to stop in now. And I thank God for the word we have heard today. Amen. We need to understand it because, like I said, we're supposed to just move on, you know, to look at different levels of faith because we need faith. You need to apply your faith. Even after you have known the will of God, you, your faith must be strong to bring down those will into manifestation. <laughs> you understand that? That God has spoken to you. If you don't apply your faith to the promise, Amon, of course, <laughs> you will not enjoy the promise. So we, we need to really understand this matter, these issues first of all. What is the will of God for me? How can I know the will of God for my life? Okay? Set the scriptures, know the word of God, the promise of God. You understand my point? Uh -huh. Let God also speak to you. Pray that God will show you what is will for you. And when you hear, please, pray for the understanding. Pray for the understanding. You understand my point? Satan is very wicked. Satan also speaks to people. But I pray that you will not hear the voice of Satan. Jesus Christ said, my sheep will hear my voice, the voice of the stranger they will not hear. You will not hear the voice of the devil, the stranger. May the blood of Jesus cover your ear, cover your eyes, cover your senses, that, so that whatever Satan wants to bombard your mind with, you will not fall into them. You will not yield to them in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. If you have not given your life to Jesus and you have heard this word, listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> Said you'll be very easy. You can never understand the will of God. Because even when God speaks to us an unbeliever, it will not mean anything to you. So the first thing to do is to give your life to Jesus. Believe He died for you. Believe God raised Him up from the dead. And then ask Him to come into your life. So you all pray this prayer with me. Say, Almighty God, I believe your word that Jesus is your son who died for me, a sinner. I'm a sinner because I came from Adam. Yes. And you raised up Jesus, your son, from the dead because of me. After he has shed his blood on the cross for my sake. Lord Jesus, I call you into my life. Come into my life and wash my sins away. Save me. Take your place in my heart. I call you my Lord and my Savior. I declare today that now you are my Lord and my Savior. And I say thank you for saving me. I thank you for coming to my life. Thank you for hearing my prayer. Almighty God, I call you my Father. Because I've accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. I say I have eternal life today because Jesus is the author of eternal life. In him is that life and I have him, therefore I have life. And I say I'm a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. Heaven is my home. I'm in heaven right now. I'm in kingdom of God right now. 
in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. From today forward, oh God, I will follow you, I will serve you. Reveal your will to me. Reveal your will for my life. Show me, teach me to understand what your will is for me. And let me have grace to walk in that will, oh God, so that only you will be glorified in my life. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. So, Father, I pray for everyone, again, that, Lord, the word they have heard today, my God, may the word bear fruit in their lives. Father, may you grant your children to be filled with the knowledge of your will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That they might walk worthy of you unto all pleasing, increasing in your knowledge, being strengthened with might in the inner man. Father, I pray that the Holy Spirit will illuminate their eyes of understanding, will illuminate their lives. I pray that only your will be done. In this season, oh God, of global COVID pandemic, Papa, shield your sons and daughters from every manner of virus. As many of your children as are going through challenges, you are the God that delivers. Release help into the life of your son and daughter and that family that is going through those challenges. Send help to them. Papa, send help to them. Where there is no way, make a way right now, Lord. Just have mercy. Papa, have mercy. Let your name not be, not be put to shame in the life of your children, but rather let your name be glorified. Have your way, King of glory. Thank you. Thank you for the wonderful time we had in your presence. We give you all the honor and glory, Lord, that between now and Wednesday when we meet again, oh God, let there be testimonies of what you have done in the life of your children. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's wonderful. So I expect to hear from you. And like I said, give us a shout out on YouTube. If you go to YouTube, this message will be on YouTube. You know, subscribe if you have not subscribed before. Okay? Make your comments. We are on Instagram. Go to Instagram as well. Follow us and all those stuff. God will bless you. And may you share also this message with people so that your people, your friends, your loved ones, they will also be blessed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let us all be in the will of God because God has his will and purpose for each and every one of us. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So until we meet again coming Wednesday, same time, 7 o'clock in the evening, Nigerian time or West African time, we'll be meeting again on Sunday by 9 o'clock in the morning for Sunday morning worship. Hallelujah. God is, will be there waiting for us. Hallelujah. So make sure... You get uh, your, 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 your phone charged, you know, with power and then also with data so that uh, Satan will not shortchange you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So until then, remain blessed, you know, remain successful, remain prosperous, remain safe in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you and see you then. I remain your pastor, Newton Denela. Amen.